by the grace of Christ, my brethren. Let us read from the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 1. The words of Agur, the son of Jake, his utterance, this man declared to Ethael, to Ethael and Yukal. Surely I am more stupid than any man and do not have the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? <clears throat> Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if you know? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and, full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Amen. The Proverbs is a book that Solomon wrote. The wisest of all men. With a wisdom that was given from God. And such wisdom wasn't given to any other man. And no other person existed who was wiser than Solomon. So this man, with the wisdom that was given him by God, wrote parables, which was the, the result of his wisdom. And he reveals and he shows the works of men that either have wisdom or foolishness. This is unto doctrine, unto teaching, unto correction and reproof. This is a divine word of God, divinely inspired, without lie, that is beneficial and holy. Written by the hands of men, of Solomon, but inspired by the Holy Spirit, by the true God. And within this beautiful book of Proverbs, which as we said, God wrote with the wisest of men, at least on the face of the earth, on natural things, things that are under the sun, among them... There is Agur. Among the words of Solomon, there are the words of Agur, who is an unknown person, an insignificant person. We never see him again. We never hear about him again. <coughs> Be and, uh, between the words of the first, I'd say Solomon is the first, God added the words of the least, a very simple man with whom God honored him. God honored him in a special way and introduced him in a special way. And he gave to him, him special revelation as well, since in his foolishness, as he says, he wanted to know something that nobody in the Old Testament could understand, not only what the name of God is, but what is the name of His Son as well. He had a tremendous revelation concerning the fact that God had and has a Son. From the beginning He had an only begotten Son, and through the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, He obtained the firstborn Son of God, who sits on the right hand of God and intercedes for all men. This is a special election that God made with Agur, 
special grace. And he gave him a special work and the divinely inspired and flawless word of God. This is a unique event here. He is a son of Jake, which means a religious person. That is, he grew up in a family of believers. And he is a friend of Athel, Ithiel. To whom he sent this anointing, and it's probably either a vision or a prophecy or any other spiritual revelation. Which indeed God, by special grace, placed it in the divinely inspired Word of God. So this man has certain specific characteristics which it will be good for us to look into carefully, to examine, to discern, and to ask from God to reveal to us and show us, so that, so that at least from far away, we may seek, being, uh, we also being equally insignificant, all of us, that we ask by God, lest we find grace, and he does something special for our life as well. <coughs> Being insignificant ourselves. And this is the first characteristic of Agur. Who says with all diligence. With all certainty I am a more stupid than any man. I am the one who makes more mistakes. I am the one who has no understanding. I am the one who doesn't have special abilities of wisdom and understanding, nor do I have the understanding of a, of, of a normal man, of a common man. There is no understanding of a common man in me. So the first characteristic here is that this man has understanding of his foolishness, of his mistakes, of his weakness, which he expresses not in a form of humility <coughs> but with true humility from the depths of his heart comparing himself to others he then testifies that he is the most foolish of all men I haven't learned wisdom I haven't understood anything I know nothing I haven't learned what the wisdom is nor do I know the knowledge of the saints of God. I have no understanding of God. I have no knowledge of the Holy One. I have no theolo theological opinions and knowledges. Knowledge. But I know that He who has access to the depths of heaven and to the heights of heaven, only one has access in heaven. And that is God. I may be the most foolish, the most simple of all, because Agur means simple. I may be the most simple of all men, but I know that there is a God who is almighty. Only one who has... who has access into the heights and the depths of the universe. He is the only one who has the ability and he can gather the wind in his fists. <coughs> the power of the winds are destructive if they be left free in the hand and the face of the earth. But there is one who has gripped the winds of the earth so that they don't bring destruction and it is apparent in our times that the winds are so destructive in their, in their might and their fury and if somebody then pull back the wind and hold it <clears throat> if somebody then say to the wind keep quiet and to the wind be calm and to the sea be calm 
then the evil will be great on the face of the earth. And this simple man here knows that all authority in the universe is in the hands of God. So if the universe at this moment as it travels in infinity with exemplary order this is due not only to the creator who created it but it is due to the word of God that preserves it as well. He knows this thing. He knows that the powers of the winds are tied and this is due only to God. Furthermore, he knows that the waters on the face of the earth are placed in order and in absolute harmony huge amounts of water in the wind in the air huge amounts of waters under the earth and huge amounts of water on the surface of the earth now if there wasn't somebody who would put these things in order the earth would have been a, a constantly flooded earth a plan, planet like it was in the in the time of noah in his simplicity he knows things that have great importance for his own life he further knows that the earth which moves not only in the universe with great speed but also it spins around its axis again with great speed somebody holds it in absolute balance so that we can enjoy a life upon this earth in his simplicity in his foolishness God has revealed great things to him the things that the great men and the wise men say that happened in our time by chance he acknowledges the existence of the Almighty God in these things And as we said, he has a blessed revelation. What is the name of God concerning Christ said, Reveal I revealed the ones to the ones you gave me your name. Back then it was Jehovah, today it's our Heavenly Father. He knew that he had a name. The name above all names that was given to his only begotten son to his son Jesus of Nazareth the firstborn but beyond these things that have been revealed to him because he is humble beyond these things in which he has found grace because he has understanding of his insignificance of his simplicity of his lack of wisdom that he is truly a fool whom God makes wise he has a good characteristic as well he says the word of God is tested it's pure word of God is a shield to those who put their trust in him <coughs> he has founded his life on the word of God he has no doubt that the Word of God is perfect perfect you cannot add to it neither take away from it and you mustn't add or take away from it because if you do this thing God who will come to question you will find that you are in the lie and not in the truth his hope is in the Word of God because it is a shield to those who put their trust in him so he adapts his life to the Word of God because he knows that only this way is he secure even though the most foolish person of all has revelation from the Word of God 
even though the foolish, the most foolish among all people has, rev has wisdom that comes from the word of God. Even though the foolish of all, most foolish of all men, which means that he cannot defend himself nor take care of himself, he knows that God is his shield and he's absolutely protected within his trust of the word of God. In other words, he's made a steadfast decision. And this steadfast decision of his is that I will depend my life, I will establish my life and live my life in accordance to the word of God. Whatever is written, for me it is the truth. It is life. It is a way. Whatever is written, for me it, it, it formulates the safe, my safe course in this life. Whatever he writes, I shall do. Whatever is not written, I will reject. My life is not in things that are out of the word of God and the will of God. On the contrary, every moment, my life is in the will of God and the word of God. Serious decisions, my dear brethren. And this is the message today that we make serious decisions which have nothing to do with our mistakes. Because as we said last Sunday, the spirit of Esau was, I will correct the things that are destroyed. But God said, I will destroy the things that you build. But the spirit of God in Jacob is, I am small and insignificant, I make mistakes. And God tells him, I will correct your mistakes. You will make mistakes and you'll destroy things, but I will come with my grace and I will build you up. And who was Esau? Esau was the wise person, the mighty one, the strong one. With abilities. And who was Jacob? Jacob was the young child. That didn't leave his mother's arms and the only thing that he knew how to do was cook lentil. But it doesn't matter, the ability doesn't matter, or the inability of the, of, the, of the same matter, the weakness or the strength. It doesn't matter if you feel small and insignificant. What matters is whether you keep the word of God, you do not deny the name of Christ, and your weakness, God will turn it into strength. And in your weakness... God will show himself almighty. Don't try and strive to obtain wisdom, understanding, and authority. Not that this is a bad thing. But don't hope in these things that you will prevail because you will not prevail. But let us strive to present ourselves approved to God. That we, live, that we work without shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. But there's a nice, beautiful third characteristic that I would dare say makes him perfect in the eyes of God. His petitions are specific, specifically two. Concerning the spiritual things, Take two things far from my life. Vanity, first of all. And the lack of truth, the lie, secondly. Vanity is this thing which man examines and attaches himself to the earthly things and not the heavenly things. The shakeable things and not the unshakable. The temporary and not the eternal. He attaches his soul, his spirit, his life. I want to create a lot of things. I want to do this. He cares about the earthly things. And the temporary pleasure of sin, enjoyment of sin, until glory and authority in this life and on this earth. 
But Agur says, take these things away from me, Lord. Take me away from them because these things will trap me. These things will destroy me. Give me grace so that I may seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Give me grace so that I may care more about the eternal things, the heavenly things, the unshakable things, the things that you, O God, rule and control and protect. And with your word, you reveal reveal your divine existence. Please help me seek your things. So in spiritual things, he asks that that temptation be taken away from his life. As the Lord said, don't let us fall into temptation from vanity, but nothing that is fake as well. He doesn't want the lie. He fears the lie. He fears the deceits of the enemy. He fears the invitations and the callings of the enemy with the shakeable things, and he fears the deceits of the enemy with human words and human ordinances. Because as we said, he has attached himself to the word of God. He knows what he doesn't need from what he is in danger of, and he knows what he does need and from what he will be blessed. And in the earthly things, the natural things, he doesn't want great and important things to happen. He doesn't want wealth because wealth corrodes the soul of man. But he doesn't want poverty as well. Poverty. Because then man will be led to sin. So with absolute wisdom, this foolish man asks for the daily bread to be given to him. He asks for sufficient food. (coughs) He is... He he is satisfied with what he has and with what God gives him. He doesn't strive or seek more, but he is thinks it sufficient with the things that God has trusted him with, and he trusts God that whatever happens in his life, it is God who does it. He isn't discouraged in the training of the Lord and the testing of the Lord, but he praises God at all times. He doesn't go up against God. He submits to God. He doesn't resist God, the will of God, but he obeys the will of God. So a person, this is a person with whom God is pleased. He is humble. With revelations of God and the environment in which he lives, that all things are in the hands of God with absolute trust and dependence on the Word of God, and with petitions in regard to spiritual things, heavenly things, and in regard to material things, the natural things, godliness with So here is the example of a person whom God is pleased with and the example that God brings before us today so that we may desire it. We want God's favor in our life. We want God's introduction in our life. We want God's safety in our life. And we want the work of God in our life, but for the glory of God. Amen.